Broken Games HD is now sponsored by Blue Microphones. Whether you're an experienced content creator or just starting out, Blue Microphones has affordable and quality audio equipment to optimize your setup. Visit bluemic.com. All right, what's going on, everybody? So as all of you know, I beat Bloodborne when it came out, got the Platinum Trophy, and also beat the Old Hunters DLC. So I decided I wanted to make a list of my top five hardest Bloodborne bosses. Of course... I shouldn't have to give this disclaimer, but I'm going to anyway. This is going to be my opinion based on my experience with all of these bosses. Because everybody exper everybody's experience with these bosses do vary. There are bosses that many people have told told me uh, that they watch my video and I beat it and beat these some of these bosses in a couple of tries and it took them way longer. And there's bosses, you know, vice versa. So obviously it's based on my experience so let's get right into the list so number five is the blood starved beast so i'm going to give you a little bit of background detail about all these bosses so the blood starved beast also known as the thirsty beast is an optional boss in bloodborne it is well to us it just looks like a really dissected and destroyed vagina but apparently it's a malformed beast that's had all of the skin peeled back. We can see that, uh, making for a very gruesome sight. Uh, it's capable of very quick and agile attacks and also erratic and just completely unpredictable movements is what makes, makes it uh, a very hard boss. Uh, some other combat information, it's weak to fire damage. Um, it's strong against arcane and bolt damage. The blood starved beast can be parried in all three stages. All of the Blood Starves Beast's attacks are focused on directly in front of him, so he has no side attacks. Also, in its second and third stage, uh, the Blood Starved Beast tends to attack in a, in a succession of five or six swipes. And lastly, the Blood Starved Beast is actually susceptible to pungent blood cocktails, which will distract it for a short time and leave it open to attacks. Now, keep in mind, I didn't know anything I just read during the time of any of these fights. This is stuff that I looked up that I found extremely interesting after, much after the fact of me going, uh, playing these uh, bosses and struggling. And that's the way I think it should be. You know, I wouldn't want to look up all this stuff and have this, all this information to use because, you know, I don't feel like that's a real raw uh, first time experience if you do all this extensive, uh, you know, research on the boss. So this is just really interesting stuff that I wanted to share with all of you. But if I knew half of that stuff in the first place, trust me, this boss would have been way easier. But for me, the reason why the Blood Star Beast uh, was so difficult was uh, for a few main reasons. One, it's unpredictability and it's very erratic, just uncontrolled attacks. You know, you never really knew what it was going to do, even though even when you started to learn its move set and you know kind of learn its telegraphed moves it was still so unpre unpredictable with its moves and also it had the uh, poison element on its side uh, especially in the i believe it was mainly the third stage where you couldn't stay too close to him or you would uh, begin to get poison damage and it had very fast attacks one in particular that did very high damage when it lunged at you and jumped clear across the screen so you know, this was, I would say this was actually the first boss in the game um, when I was playing it that I actually had trouble, right? This is the first boss I had to keep coming back to, and I think I probably died uh, over 15 times. You know, the ones before this were pretty much a cakewalk. So this was my first boss I had trouble with, and it's the fourth boss, and it's an optional boss. So the Blood Starved Beast is number five. Number four is Ibritus, Daughter of the Cosmos. So some combat information for Ibritus. Uh, attacking from the sides or behind is very difficult as her turn speed is extremely high and I learned that the hard way. Her laser beam attack does very high damage and it is very easy for you to get killed if you get hit with these in a quick succession and she shoots them very fast. Her head is the weak point in the fight and if you land shots on her head, she will take bonus damage. She's very susceptible 
to uh, visceral attacks and those leave her very vulnerable and stunned and open to more attacks and she does telegraph um, most of her moves in general and definitely her most powerful moves so one of the reasons this boss is uh, you know on my list was because uh, her normal attacks weren't so devastating uh, and they weren't so intimidating and she's not you know she doesn't really have much speed uh, but w but what makes her difficult is her high level of damage that her moves incur mainly du during the second phase so first phase is pretty easy uh, you know not too hard to get her get her health down mm -hmm. but then she starts using these attacks that do very high damage and are it can very easily kill you you know just very instantly and suddenly so that's the most uh difficult thing about this boss is um not doesn't have i would say a very uh diverse move set it seems like most of her normal attacks uh or move set aren't very threatening or damaging but the few she does have like her laser beam they just can end the fight very abruptly and that was my experience with this boss. I would be able to handle all of her normal attacks, you know, some of the other special attacks, but then when it came down to the laser beam, I would just die every single time to that one move. So, you know, she's not the best all around boss, but that laser beam made her, you know, it was easily one of the most powerful moves and very, you know, uh, difficult to dodge. But apparently um, the easiest way to dodge your laser beam is to run in a circle uh, around her. So that was the easiest way to do that. Like I said, not something I knew before. Number three is the Martyr Logarius. Now, I think Logarius is probably my favorite boss fight. I also believe uh, the Martyr Logarius had the best all-around move set. He had moves for what seemed to be both offense and defense. He had he also had physical and many projectile attacks. A lot of the uh, bosses in Bloodborne were mainly just physical, you know, attackers. They had to make physical contact with you to cause damage. But Logarius had many projectile moves and uh, a lot of moves that seemed to be to keep you at a distance. He had a, a lot of ranged attacks to just uh, control space between you and him, you and him, and just play keep away. And then uh, in his further stages, he actually became more offensive and used both uh, more physical attacks, but also still used, uh, you know, um, his his projectiles and some of these uh, ranged attacks. Uh, and he became faster in the later stages uh, you know a lot of them definitely were hard harder to dodge some combat information about Marta Logarius uh, he's strong against fire arcane and bolt damage uh, he can be staggered with firearms in uh, pretty easily in the second phase um, he can't fall off because of invisible walls all over this uh, this area you know and Bloodborne pretty much has invisible usually has invisible walls everywhere so you know you don't really do much falling off in like the previous souls games it is possible i believe it, it was possible to make uh, i'm not i think a few bosses fall off um if, if not bosses then some enemies so because of the invisible walls you can't use that tactic to try to uh push push him off or anything like that and make him fall off uh and he does use flight attacks in like the second or third stage he also buffs himself periodically i believe uh, in the second or third stage so that he is invincible towards any bullet stun or any type of damage from it. So one of the reasons, uh, as I stated before, he is one of the hardest bosses in my opinion is because he has the most uh, diverse attacks and move sets and you ha you had a lot to remember like how many times he did uh certain um attacks in su in succession you had to memorize and uh you know learn all his telegraphed moves and even when he wasn't using um projectile attacks he had a weapon that gave him a lot of range so overall i think he is the most uh, diversified and then he used this move that you saw before him when he stabs a knife into the ground and you had knives swirling around the area so yeah like I said in my opinion he is the most well-rounded boss in Bloodborne uh, when it comes to his attacks and movesets both both offensive defensive um, 
projectile based and physical attacks you know um, i don't think there's anybody that really comes comes close in in that way so that's why martyr logarius is number three number two is ludwig the accursed so some little information and details about ludwig he's easily probably one of the most uh aggressive and violent bosses in the game just not really giving you a chance to breathe uh you know not a chance to catch just like trying to slow down the fight and uh give you a chance to think and analyze things he doesn't really give you that chance to kind of slow down the pacing and think he's just completely relentless and then uh he if and i would say he's one of the bosses where uh all all of his stages or phases were actually challenging right after you learn his first phase um then his second phase is just as bad if not worse but he was one of the the bosses where you know across the board all his phases were pretty freaking difficult some other information apparently saw weapons are recommended uh since he is classified as a beast enemy fire paper and bolt paper uh pretty much deal the same um, the same amount of damage uh to ludwig on a quality built character staying at his sides or under him is the best chance you have to kind of dodge his attacks but even that is still a challenge because he still will reach and sideswipe uh depending where you are at and he does a lot of just unpredictable movements and he seems to take up a lot of real estate on the screen and even if you try to stay under him at or at the side of him he has this move where he just uh, i guess uh, flops around and throws himself uncontrollably and that does a lot of damage if you are hit with it while underneath him so yeah ludwig was difficult for me because uh he has a very wide wide number of attacks it seems and you had to really analyze every single one because you if you treated one move like the other then it could result in your death you had to kind of get each move and it's timing down if you mistimed even one swipe that could easily lead to death because if you uh miss miss time one swipe then you're gonna get hit with the following ones so you could dodge three get hit with the fourth and then it's a wrap so the strategy of staying underneath him or at the side of him doesn't necessarily guarantee you anything because as you can see all those limbs he has he makes full use of that and then in his second stage uh he gets his sword which has as you can see a lot of reach so it requires like I said, very pre precise timing. So number one is Lawrence the First Vicar, or as some people told me, it's pronounced Vicar. Either way, um, so Lawrence is easily one of the most aggressive bosses. Uh, he takes up a lot of real estate, and one of the things that makes uh, it hard to dodge his attacks is the shape of this boss arena so he actually uses that to his advantage it's hard for you to escape it's hard to dodge certain moves it's hard to uh, even just run past him sometimes and get to the other side just to uh, get some breathing room because of the way uh, the the environment is set up and then in, in his second stage uh, I believe he takes up more room than any other boss in his second stage he takes up more real estate uh in the battle arena um because uh he's no longer standing upright he's just crawling flat and not only that he actually leaves a trail and then he has these still pretty wide swipes and when he moves he leads with these hand attacks which take up a lot of room and have a lot of reach and then he's leave, leaving a pool of lava behind him so he just takes up a whole bunch of space on the screen which leaves you with a very small um area and window to actually attack so that was just my uh information um based on my experience with him some other 
details about him. Um, he obviously deals a lot of fire and physical damage, so it's recommended you use the Char uh, Hunter set for a lot of good resistance. Um, it, it's also recommended you use Fading Lake, which gives you additional fire defense. Um, it has three phases. First phase is similar to the Cleric Beast, which it looks like. Second phase, it becomes more aggressive. And third phase, uh, it uses, uh, as I stated, lots of... Um, area and effects attacks uh in when it comes to phase three when it loses its legs like i said it becomes lava starts leaking out of its body um so now its attacks are mostly focused in front of him because he doesn't have to focus on attacks uh in back of him because the pool of lava is used as a defense and so the only choice you really have is attacking from the side right between his arms and the pool of lava. But he can still use side uh, swipes, side swipe attacks to still inflict damage on you. So it's just so many like situational things like that that really made him such a formidable opponent uh, for me. And I died over and over again. Um, you know, his first stage is so damn hard. Then his, you know, second stage isn't as hard as far as when it comes to the attacks. But you have to figure out the whole how you um, circumvent the whole fact that he's dripping lava from the back. And he just has a lot of consecutive attacks, especially in the first and second phase. Um, there's many situations where I died because... Um, I thought he was finished with his attacks, but then I would get hit with the last attack. So you actually have to learn and memorize um, how many times he attacks in certain move sets. Sometimes it's three, sometimes it's four. I think there's uh, certain move sets where he, uh, you know, has up to like six or seven attacks, and the best strategy is to dodge right or dodge left at the right time and uh it's better to actually use a weapon in the form where it can do quicker attacks because actually landing those uh you know those harder blows with a you know the formation of the weapon where uh, it does more damage is, is a little bit more difficult so you have a better chance at using a quicker weapon and just have a better chance at uh dodging more attacks and getting more attacks in you have a better chance at uh doing more damage with uh, more hits by more hits than trying to do more damage in less hits. So uh, quick, the quicker variation of a weapon is definitely recommended. But yeah, Lawrence's moveset is all about area control from the leaking lava to the uh, to the flamethrower, which uh, you know he put he spits lava on the floor. He has very strong attacks. Obviously, he's pretty damn agile. Uh, the his movements take up a lot of room. You know, he can close the distance between you and him very quickly in all of the stages. I mean, there's just so many good things um, about this boss that make him pretty difficult. Uh, I believe he can be staggered. I'm not 100% sure on that. He definitely can be stunned by visceral attacks, though. I'm not sure if he can be stunned uh, by bullet damage. But he's just a very good and difficult boss. And he's the boss that gave me the most difficult time. The hardest time I had was beating this boss. And he is the last boss in the Old Hunters DLC. So that is it. Let me know what y'all think. If you have a top five list, let me know what it is in the comment section. And I am out of here. Peace.